thing that a lot of people have to understand that sometimes you it's not that you have to choose like to change people's lives is that you change people's lives because that's what you do i mean you were yeah. you had that in you it wasn't like oh all of a sudden i want to i want to become a motivational speaker i want to do a spartan race no that was you developed that and i think a lot of young people right now especially we got a, a lot of young guys who hear my message you gotta understand patience is a fucking game this is the Raul Velasquez experience. Learn what it takes to go to the next level. Welcome to Daily Edge Podcast. My name is Raul Velasquez, and today we have a very special guest, CEO and founder of the Spartan Race. Joe Desen, it's a pleasure having you, brother, here. I can't wait to hear your story. I can't wait to talk to you. I can't wait to take these things to a whole different level. So welcome, Joe. Thanks for having me. I love that studio. I love the fact that you are so on. I need some coffee about this morning. Listen, man, I, I have a ritual, a sick ritual every single day. I do a, a half a, a Spartan race every day. Now I'm just fucking with you, man. <laughs> You're an animal. I, I love it. I just, you know, I, I think that your story, I was reading a little bit about your story, man. It's so inspirational to see that that you went through a, a almost a death trial before you started the race, right? So tell us a little bit about how you started the Spartan race. What was the beginning? Yeah, right? well, Let's go way back. I grew up in Queens, New York. Um, for those listening out there, actually, even for those watching, you, I got a parrot behind me, so you might hear some chirping. I'm, I'm not in like I'm not in a jungle in Costa Rica or, or uh, Brazil, but um, I'm, I grew up in Queens, New York. If you saw the movie Goodfellas, uh, I grew up in Ground Zero for Goodfellas, literally right in the heart of it, and um, you know. It was organized crime central. Hmm. There, were, there were four of the five family bosses were there. And as a young boy, myself and my friends, uh, we aspired to be that. Hmm. We wanted to have a nice Cadillac. We wanted to have rolls of cash. We wanted to respect a suit. Um, you know, if, if, it sounds ridiculous, but if, if you and I grew up in, uh, let's say, in Africa, where uh, there was a marathon winner who had a Mercedes Benz because he won – uh, the Boston Marathon, we would aspire to be marathoners, right? Mm -hmm. So as a young kid, you want to be whatever the big guy or girl, like you want to chase that. Exactly. So that's what we, that's what I wanted to be. And um, my mother quickly saw that we were living in an environment that was uh, unhealthy. Everybody's going to jail. People were dying. And she found probably the only health food store in all of New York at the time. And she went in and she met this guy, you could look him up, Swami Boa, uh, is a famous uh, Indian guru, yoga teacher, and she learned to meditate. She got into yoga. She um, she started. She became a vegan, and um, you know it was completely opposite of everything we were around. I mean, it was a little weird, actually, right? It was hippie-ish. It was uh, I was being laughed at by my friends. My parents got divorced. My mother, um, the parrot's just trying to chime in here. My, my, my mother moved us to Ithaca, New York, mm. which was a little more forgiving. Uh, it's a college community. Cornell University is there. Ithaca College is there. Lots of professors, lots of hippies. And um, they were more into that lifestyle of mm. like vegan, meditation, yoga. We had monks in the living room. Wow. But anyway, during that whole transformation, um, she brought me to a race in Queens, New York, which still exists today. And it's called the Transcendence Run. Hmm. And uh, it's 3,100 miles long. It's around a one mile loop. So if you and I were doing it, we go around one mile and one mile, one mile, we keep going until we finish 3,100 times. Wow. So it's six, 60 days of hell. And um, as a young person, you know, I didn't do the race. I was like 10, 11 years old, whatever. And, but I saw, my sister saw, what the human body and mind was was capable of and so um fast forward i'm trying to get away from my mom i don't want any part of the monks and the meditation i want to be with the mobsters and um i eventually build a, a business a, a swimming pool and construction business and it becomes a pretty substantial business i end up knock on wood i end up going to college which was great only because my mother had moved us to ithaca new york and, uh, and, but the business kept growing. And when I graduated, uh, I kept the business rather than go get a job because I was making a couple of hundred thousand dollars a year at this point. It was a big deal for a kid coming out of college. My college was paid for. I, all my customers were the big bosses. 
and 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 uh, and the smaller ball. Everybody was my I had seven hundred customers, and so I felt like I was the big man on campus in Queens, you know. And and I and I was and I ran away from all my mother's preaching and teaching. I didn't want any part of that. By the way, there was no Whole Foods back then. There was no yoga journals. Like this stuff wasn't cool. I was gonna like say that. Like that's that's completely different to, to what we see in the movies. I mean, back in the days, like you know, Goodfellas, all that, all the gangster movies. Like nobody was fucking meditating. They were not no. doing yoga. Like so, so you you went from like the the hardcore mobster scene. And then you 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 shifted into the monk lifestyle, and and there was were you were you going back on the weekends to see your mom and and, and going into that? It was kind of like a double life type of thing going on. Yeah, it was almost like I was in the CIA, right? I had to live one life when I was with my mom. I had to live a different life when I was with my dad. But I really wanted to be with my dad, mm -hmm. and I really wanted to be back with my friends in the neighborhood. And the good thing was I had the business, so that allowed me to leave Ithaca and get to New York on the weekends and, and then all summer long because I had to run my business. And um, yeah, my mother tried. She just kept pushing, but I wasn't buying it. And fast forward, uh, I somehow, I mean, it would be a long story, I'll tell you. I met a guy in, at Cornell University who was Italian and he took a liking to me because again, I was Italian and he, he was everything that the guys in the neighborhood were but he wasn't, he didn't do anything illegal. He graduated Cornell University. He um, made a lot of money in the markets. He managed a billion dollars. So, so I could look up to him. I could aspire to be him, but it didn't come with jail time and negativity. So he took a liking to me. I took a real liking to him and he guided me. He said, look, when you get back to the neighborhood after you graduate, I, I want you to look into going to Wall Street. I want you to get out and sell that business. And I thought he was crazy. I, why would I sell the business? I was making money. I was. I had. I had a backhoe, a, a, a bobcat. I had trucks. I had people working for me. I. I felt badass, right? And but he stayed on me every month. He called me. Hmm. When are you going to sell that business? When are you going to get to Wall Street? And he begged me. And um, I don't know what year it was. Probably probably mid nineties. He gives me a stock tip. And he says, look, if you're not going li to listen to me, it's been five years. I'm calling you every month and you're, you haven't listened to me. I want you to buy the stock. And I, I had never bought a stock before. So he, um, he How convinces me. But, How old were you? Uh, this time I'm, I'm probably 24, 25. And he convinces me that, look, you're not married. You're making a lot of money. Now is the only time in your life where you could take, you could take a big risk and recover from it. Hmm. When you have four kids and you got a mortgage, you're not gonna be able to do this. So I highly suggest, you know, you take a big chunk of, uh, of cash. So I ended up, I ended up investing stupidly, smartly, whatever you want to say, 140 grand in, in this one stock he, he, he recommended. Well, the next day it got taken over at the company and I made a hundred grand and I said, holy shit, <laughs> I am going to Wall Street, man. This guy is onto something. So I sold my business to my employees. And I went and I, and I started to search out getting a job. And the only job I could get, because again, I, even though I went to a college, I was already five years out of school. I, I had a construction company. What the hell do I know? I had a beeper on my, remember be, I don't know yeah, if you guys yeah. remember beepers, right? Course, I had a beeper on course. my belt. I, I was, um, and he said, he said, try to get a job. So I, I, I interviewed, I interviewed, I interviewed. I finally got a job uh, working on the floor of the exchange. Um, I was gonna get paid 35 grand a year. So here I was, I gave up a business where I was making a couple of hundred thousand dollars, right? And I had my own equipment, I was the boss, to being a peon on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange for 35 grand a year. And my expenses were gonna, were gonna quintuple because now I gotta live in Manhattan, in Queens, right? So I moved to Manhattan, I take the job, very hard to do. If you're out there listening or watching this, very hard to pivot in your life. Right. But again, I was single and if we, anytime you're going to do it. Plus, plus I was confident enough at that point. I know how to make money. Yeah. I'm a, I'm an earner. So worst case, I'll go, I'll do something. I'll do, I'll figure something out. I'm a, I'm a hustler. So take the job. I remember crying one day on the, on the, on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. I'm embarrassed to say, um, because I was getting yelled at. I was trying to answer four phones at once. I couldn't do the math fast enough. And um, I was like, what the hell am I doing here? I can't even believe I took 27 steps backwards in my life. 
But somehow, because I didn't even know the word Spartan back then, but somehow, uh, maybe my mother's teachings, maybe seeing that race at a young age, I, I stuck with it. And I came back the next day and the next day and the next day. And uh, I got good at it. Mm. And before you know it, I, I started to apply some of the principles I learned from the neighborhood mm. um, to the business on Wall Street. I started, I started um, taking people to the right restaurants because I knew that game from, from living in the neighborhood I lived in. I, 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 I never had my hand out asking for money first. I always provided the service first. I understood that if you're supposed to be somewhere at 8 a.m., you get there at 7.45. Like just basic neighborhood principles I applied to this business uh, of, of finance in, in, the, in the finance capital in Manhattan. Like I had made it, you know what I mean? So anyway, I, I worked my way up. I eventually started my own business there because um, I guess looking back, I didn't know what I didn't know. I think, I think if I was more of a pedigree and I'd, I'd gone uh, right from school to a training program, I would have said, I can't start my own company. I, I, I can't, I could never get, but I didn't know anything. So I was so stupid. I just, I just said, fuck it. And I started, started a company on Wall Street. So, so let me just take it back because I, I want the listeners to understand because this, this podcast is about having the edge, right? And, 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 and when a man has the edge, it doesn't matter what industry you're in, doesn't matter how hard life hits you, there is an inside voice or inside desire, an inside fire that, that kind of guides you, right? So when you started your, your journey, you know, it was more of what I, what I call the, the peasant mentality, right? Re learning how to become a man, learning how to, how to you know, find that edge. And you found that edge by modeling. And you were modeling other people. You were modeling the, the neighborhood gangsters. You were modeling people who, in your mind, were successful. But then the mentor that came into your life was actually the one who was guiding you to get out of trouble. Because were you, so, were you, were your friends in jail? Were you hang around? Because my, like, ninety percent of my friends ended up either dead or in jail. Because my, your story, and my story are very similar. So I know what it's like to have like that double. Like my mom was always keeping me out of trouble. My mom was always like telling me how you know, to stay away from, from bad friends. And, and in the weekends I had, you know, family in the Bronx. So I live here in Connecticut and we have family in the Bronx. So in the weekends we'll go in the Bronx and we'll do all crazy shit. And then during the week I'm here in Connecticut trying to, trying to stay alive, right? Trying to, to, to be that guy. But, uh, when, when you started making money and what were your friends saying? Like the, the neighborhood friends, when you started making money, when you started your company, were they laughing at you? Were they supporting you? Or they pretty much, like we're, we're trying to take from you. What, were your, what was your sphere of influence doing at that point? A couple, couple of things. When you talk, by the way, you fire up the bird. I think the bird likes, your, like, likes the Bronx. <laughs> but I, I, um, a couple of things. I got people coming out of jail just now, believe it or not, mm. that, went in, that went in in 88, 90. Like they're just getting out now. Mm. So um, lots of people uh, that went away. And, and I think that goes to your second question on were people laughing or, you know, it was pretty rare for a young kid to be cleaning swimming pools and doing cement work. Like unless your family business was out and you were with your dad or your uncle or whatever, and they were yelling at you to, to lay bricks every, right? Which, which was predominant or, or wake up early and, and open the doors for the pizza place, right? Cause there were a lot of family businesses there. Um, and so my friends didn't really, under, like, there were so many other things we could go do to make money. We could steal, we could do all the things that, like, why would you be doing this? Yeah, yeah. The people don't really understand that. And I think when I reflect back, like, why was I, well, my dad ran into financial hard times. Two of my neighbor was the big boss and he, he was guiding me a little bit there. So again, I was modeling, right? I was modeling, I had a mentor and, um, and three, I just, I, I didn't, I wanted to know, was I tough enough? Hmm. Like, like, I think that was going through all our heads as young kids. Like, was I tough enough? Could I, yeah. now there were some kids that were just naturally tough. They were just wired. Kind of like a kid wakes up or, or, you know, and he could play football naturally or soccer. Net. Like there were some kids that were just bad. Like these kids were just, they were made for prison. I wasn't. Hmm. And, and, um, and so I wanted to know, was I tough enough? And, and I think, I think building this business would prove to me mm. when I look back that I was, that I can hang with these, mm. with these folks. I could build a business from scratch, yeah. right? I could, and, and, and I also, I was very lucky. I had, I was going back home to mom on the weekends where I was learning like normal stuff. 
and and they were and there were lectures uh, around Cornell University uh, in this college town where I actually sought out uh, leaders and I, I was learning shit that I could then apply to my business. So so yeah, people were people were confused, but then I got res- I became respected. It yeah. took some time, probably five six years. Then all of a sudden, uh, when the business got bigger and they saw that I owned trucks and I was making money, then all of a sudden it wasn't funny anymore. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, now they know that you're up to something. Now they realize, like, shit, maybe Joe has his shit together. Now, you know, all, the, all of a sudden, at the beginning, people laugh at you. At the beginning, people think that you may not know what you're doing. But after a while, I think the persistence, because this is what happened to me when I started real estate, is, is people at the beginning were laughing at me. What's this immigrant, you know, selling real estate in Connecticut? Why is he investing in real estate? But after I had a yeah. couple of properties and I own a couple of, of, of multifamilies, they wouldn't laugh anymore because they realized, like, shit, he's into something, right? <laughs> he's making some money. Yeah. So, yeah. so now, now tell me, you're 24 years old, you sold your company, you went into Wall Street, you, you, you were not making as much money as before. When was that threshold? Because I remember for me, the moment that, that I started making money in real estate, it was a threshold of, am I doing this for purpose or am I doing this for the money? Did you have that realization at one point and say, fuck man, I'm making so much money in Wall Street, but is this, something, is this my purpose? When was that uh, epiphany that you had? Yeah, you know what happened is is I'm on Wall Street and we're making we're doing knock on wood we're doing very very well like like I felt like I made it I I made I these were I was achieving things I never wasn't even in my plan mm-hmm. this was unbelievable we were having hundred two hundred three hundred thousand dollar days wow like over and over and over. it was unbelievable and and so um, but it comes at a cost mm-hmm. I'm not sleeping. I'm not eating well. I'm not feeling good. And um, I happen to be with my cousin, my, my mother's sister's son, who, remember, my mother and her sister were in, found this stuff together, the yoga, the meditation. Anyway, they both died. Mm. So I'm with my cousin. Both our parents, both our moms are gone. And he's, he's like, um, you got to do some Bikram yoga. Right. And I'm on a trading desk and I got two phones and we're making money and we're out every night and driving a Mercedes and Bikram yoga. What are you talking about? Got to do some Bikram yoga. You're going to love it. It's hardcore. It's 130 degrees in the room. It's 90 minutes. It'll kick your ass. Hmm. Yoga is going to kick my ass. My mother did it every day in the living room. <laughs> anyway, I go do the yoga and it was awesome. And then randomly around that same time, and I'm feeling good, right? Sweating and, and, and back to the stuff I used to do with my hands outside every day. Mm. The same time, the stairwell in our building is, is uh, the, the elevator's broken. I got to take the stairwell. And I'm walking up the stairwell right around the same time. And um, I see this guy who's got his shirt off and he's carrying two dumbbells, like 40 or 50 pound dumbbells up the stairs, 30 flights. And I start talking to him because we're at the same, I, I can keep up with him because he's got two <laughs> dumbbells, right? And he's on the cover of Men's Health, I find out. He's ripped. He's the epitome of what you want to be. Just like I wanted to be the gangster, I want to be this guy. And we start talking. He's like, meet me, in the, meet me in the stairwell every day. So I start meeting him in the stairwell every day. We start running up and down the stairs together. And he says to me, you got to do an adventure race. And I think for the listeners, uh, there's a couple of um, uh, common threads here, right? Like, like you said, modeling, finding a mentor, but also like, I'm a pretty malleable guy, right? Like I, 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 my mind is open to, Hey, go try this yoga. Hey, go to wall street. Hey, let's start it. Like I'm not, I don't have like blinders on where I, I don't listen. I listen. I take a chance. I learn a lot of people aren't like that. Yeah. Yeah. And right. I think that's something you can learn here. So, so I go do an adventure race and I'm like, Oh my God, I feel alive. I feel like I'm mixing cement outside again. This is unbelievable. We're kayaking. The sun is shining. We're biking, running. My heart is beating. I'm sweating. So, uh, that was it. I was hooked. I was hooked. I was hooked. Now I still, I still needed to have that job on wall street. Um, but what I did was I fell so much in love with this feeling of being alive that I said, you know what, I'm going to start taking my clients rather than to dinner. I said, you know what, instead of taking these guys for dinners, instead of taking these guys uh, to do unhealthy things, what I'm going to do is we're going to do uh, healthy stuff. I'm taking them for Bikram yoga. The bird is pissed. I'm taking them. Um, I'm taking them to do races around the world. And the harder the race, the harder the race, I'm going to fucking choke this bird. Hang on a second. The harder the race, 
the more interested I am, right? So um, before you know it, I'm finding myself in Alaska. Mm. I am uh, in waist deep snow, uh, breaking trail for the Iditarod. If you're out there and you don't know what the Iditarod is, the Iditarod is a dog sled race across Alaska. And they send us out before the dogs to, to break trail for the dogs. And um, it's 30 below. My eyelashes are frozen shut. I'm looking for a friggin' Eskimo to, to get warm. And, um, and that was it. I mean, I felt alive, you know, I, I loved it. And so the first question you asked, which is, um, how did Spartan start? It sounds like you had a near death experience. It was exactly that. I was doing one of these races and I was uh, on the side of a mountain and it was a, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to curse or not. I've already done it a few times, a fucked up experience, but, um, <laughs> but it was, it was enough to transform me and literally bring me back to everything. My mom said, my mom was right. Everybody else was wrong. And I packed it all in. I moved to Vermont. I met my wife. We got a bunch of goats, chickens, uh, cows, clearly a bird behind me. That's, by the way, these birds, la they last like 70 years. So oh, yeah. unless, unless I cook it, it's, it's going to be around for a while. He's going to outlive you, man. He's going to outlive you. You know what's up with this bird? I'm going to go tangent here. The bird... We had a fire alarm go off in the house a few weeks ago. You know that beeping, beep, beep, and then you got to get on a ladder and take the thing down? Yeah, yeah. The bird is copying the fire alarm. <laughs> so it just, it won't stop making that sound. <laughs> anyway. So so listen, I, I what, what I'm hearing, man, is like the universe and God is was, was preparing you for something bigger. Uh, and because of your mother's intuition, your mother's upbringing, you actually or gravitated towards the adventure. And I think all of us as men, we gravitate to adventure, but we sedate that adventure and we become assholes. We, be, we become pretty much, you know, people who wanna just make money and that's what's happening right now, entrepreneurs are just, we are stuck in the tunnel. And I think that a lot of men are stuck in the tunnel because they lack adventure, they lack that, that drive, they lack that edge, they lack that Spartan mentality because we've been sedated for such a long time, just, hustling, grinding, making money. And that's what, the, that's the reason I ask is that when was that moment I realized like, fuck man, I'm not, like money is not fulfilling me anymore. Money is not the edge. Money is not the Spartan's way. Purpose is is having an edge. Purpose is, is, have, is having that drive. So when did you decide to actually say, you know, fuck it, I'm not gonna work in Wall Street no more. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave Wall Street and I'm gonna create a business out of my purpose. When was that moment that you said, fuck, I'm gonna, I need to figure out how to create a business out of my purpose. Well, so, so September 11th happened. So that was a tough time because we were right there. Hmm. I was on the phone with people when the towers came down that were under the tower. Like it was a, it was a messy situation. And, um, and I think it had been brewing for a while. I, I had on my trading desk a picture of a red barn. Hmm. Now I didn't grow up on a farm, but I had a picture of a red barn. I don't even know why I had it there, you know? But I guess someday subconscious, I was going to a, I was not going to grow up the way my kids were going to grow up the way I grew up. Um, I, I wanted to be on a farm. I wanted to be wholesome, legit, purposeful. Um, and, 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 but it's hard to leave the money. Yeah. yeah. It's hard to leave the money. And so, um, so I met my wife, which was like another miracle, right? Who, uh, I don't know, hook, line, and sinker in about 12 seconds. And uh, she's up, she's up for what I'm, what I'm about, right? I'm doing these races, so she comes along. And then I just decide I'm gonna start a race business. <laughs> but I'm not gonna give up Wall Street yet because there's just too much money there. I'm making money. I don't know, by the way, uh, what if I can't make money doing anything else? I need the money. At least I think I need the money. So I had one foot in the race business, one foot on Wall Street. And I wouldn't take either, I, I wouldn't take I should have really jumped ship on one or the other because they were both, they were both being hindered because I had one foot on each, right? I, I wasn't doing great with the race business and I wasn't doing as well on wall street. And, um, finally after 10 years, 10 years of having one foot on each, I finally took my foot off wall street and I said, Hey, I'm done. This mm -hmm. is just too, late. I got too many people telling me that I changed their life. Mm. that they went out and and ran this lost weight back with their husband back with their wife gave up drugs 
uh, fought cancer, whatever it is. Like I got too much, hmm. which was exactly my mother's whole yeah. pitch. She was getting people into yoga meditation, right? And, and she was hearing the same stories. So, and I wish she was alive to hear me and you talking right now, but, but, um, it was obvious then at that point, 2010, that, uh, this is what I was meant to do hmm. and shame on, by the way, I mean, had I not had uh, wall street, I wouldn't have been able to do this. Exactly. I, I, exactly. I, I invested more money than was responsible. Hmm. So, and I think that's where a lot of, a lot of people who, uh, who see guys like you and, and they say, fuck man, how did he do it? You know, how did he build a movement? You know, Spartan race, I believe is a international movement and, and, is, is key for the listeners and people who are watching to understand that a man with a purpose could create anything as long as he's being guided by a, by a deeper knowing. Uh, and I think that your purpose like at the beginning, oh. at the beginning, your purpose was cleaning pools. Shit, you will live in your purpose. But then after that, you, you, you were in Wall Street, you will live in your purpose. But now you started to find a deeper purpose. And that's what I am constantly looking uh, to help men is find a deep fucking purpose. That's exactly what happened to me. In real estate, I was making a shit ton of money. And then when that shit didn't juice me up anymore, I started creating the, the next level experience. And, and then when I started realizing that I had a, a deeper purpose, when I started seeing what you said, the changes in people's lives, that's when we have to take responsibility and say, fuck, am I doing this for the money or am I doing it for the impact? And, and very few people, Joe, figured out how to make money on their purpose. So when was... So, so now you, you, you in the, you, you, in the race. Now you, you're creating a business out of it. Now, now tell us what happened. Was it easy from the beginning? Like people believed in you and said, Hey man, I'm going to support the Spartan race. I'm going to do this. And what, what were some of the, the, the fuck ups that you had at the beginning so we could learn from that experience? A couple of things. Let's go back to purpose for a second. I don't even think I understood it at the time. I don't know if you did. Um, I wasn't, I just knew I felt unhealthy. I knew. I knew that the thing that I thought money was going to bring, it didn't necessarily bring, hmm. right? Money's good. It definitely makes life a little easier, but it doesn't solve all the problems. It, it, matter of fact, it adds a lot of problems. Um, but I, I don't even think I was aware that hearing somebody say you changed my life, like that that was, per it was just it just felt good. I remember, I do remember saying one day, like, I can't believe people pay me and I get to hear this. Yeah. This is unbelievable, yeah. right? But I think later I figured out, oh my God, I found my purpose. But anyway, um, I lost money for 10 years with this thing from, from 2000, for more than 10 years, almost 15 years, from 2000 to 2000 millions of dollars. Now I had my foot in Wall Street so I could fund it, yeah. completely irresponsible. There would have been nobody in their right mind that would have let me keep doing that. Um, 2010, I got serious. I changed the name to Spartan. I started to get bigger from 2010 to 2015. I lost more money, millions, but then I didn't have, I wasn't making money mm. anymore. I had to find investors, friends. Thank God I had good friends on Wall Street. They were sending me money. And um, in 2015, finally, 2014, 15, it finally turned the corner mm. and, uh, and it became a profitable business. Thank mm. God. It's awesome. Uh, but if I had to do it, all, like even today, I say, I'd rather, I'd rather just get paid by the government to do that. Cause I feel like, I really feel like this is God's work getting people, like you said, to find a sense of adventure, men and women. And, uh, the part that sucks about it is just the budgeting and the quarterly numbers. And like, like yeah. it sucks. That part sucks. Like I'd rather just measure success and number of lives changed. They want to deal with the, the money and the bullshit and the expenses, but like, that's the reality of business. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what we have to do. I mean, that's part of business. So yeah. one of the things that I, that I talk about, and I think that it, I, I want to point out in your journey, this is what you went through, is the beginning was the peasant mentality. As a man, we go through the peasant mentality. Then we find the warrior's edge, right? You, you became a warrior in Wall Street. You were making money. But then once yeah. you realize that the warrior's way or the warrior's edge is not sustainable, like you can't live on that. You couldn't attract the woman that you're with right now. You couldn't be the man that you are right now. Then you went to what I call the tunnel. And the tunnel is when a lot of fucking men get lost. The tunnel is when I got yeah. lost. And that's when I started drinking. I started sedating. I started like looking and, and self-destroying my, my universe, my, my world, with my wife, with my kids. And then for you, fitness and, and working on yourself is when you start finding that edge again and what I call the king's edge, the code, the code of the king. So if you start looking back now and, and you could advise the Joe, you know, the, when he was a warrior, would you 
advise him to to invest that money? What what was the what's the biggest advice you will advise the warrior where, that you wore ten years ago when you started the the purpose of the race? Well, one thing I just listening to you, I was just thinking. I think in the tunnel, I was doing burpees. <laughs> I was doing a lot of burpees in the tunnel. But but um, I think the advice. A couple of things. I think I would say patience. I think uh, when I was a warrior, um, you want to get there. You want to win today, yeah. right? Faster, now, more. Um, and I would have said patience. Uh, even though life is short, it's actually a long game, mm. and and you, we're going to be just fine. Um, and I think I would have, I, you know, I'm ashamed of myself for focusing so much on the superficial stuff mm. at that point. recent years, learning to shed the ego and, and be, um, a lot more flexible as we talked about earlier. And, um, I mean, listen, for those listening and watching, uh, you can't believe the currency you get by helping people hmm. like it's it's 10x whatever money is yeah 10x and just like you said like people want to look if, if you were starting a over again if you were not in wall street you probably wouldn't have the means just like the same thing with me if i was in real estate i wouldn't be able to do what i do real estate funded yeah. so much of what i do here yeah. funded thing that a lot of people have to understand that sometimes you, it's not that you have to choose like to change people's lives. It's that you change people's lives because that's what you do. I mean, you were yeah. you had that in you. It wasn't like oh, all of a sudden I wanna I wanna become a motivational speaker. I wanna do a Spartan race. No, that was you developed that. And I think a lot of young people right now, especially we got a, a lot of young guys who hear my message. You gotta understand patience is a fucking game. Like I love one of the yeah. videos that you did. I was watching some of the videos on Instagram. You said like fuck, like stop stop putting a frame time like working out forty five minutes. Like just fucking do it. Just fucking go until you fucking throw up. <laughs> just fucking right. do, like do burpees until you throw up. So, so I think that's the mentality. And I see that you have kids, and I, and I love you know I have young kids who have a twelve and a thirteen year old, uh, and I'm constantly telling them the life is gonna be fucking hard. That if they can, they if they can be happy in these walls that we provide for them, the security we provide for them outside is a fucking hard ass world. So what what are some of the, the teachings that you're giving your kids now to prepare them to have that Spartan heart, that Spartan mentality? My wife, it's funny. My wife just walked in. She's going to love this story. So um, two days ago, I had my 12-year-old. I had my 12-year-old. I had um, my 7-year-old. And then their friend who's 15, right, moved from the house. We were coming in on an Uber. And I said, hey, hey guys, um, jump out here. What do you mean? Jump out. I'll see you home. How are we going to get home? <laughs> Figure it out. And I left. And, and uh, you know, an hour later, Courtney, my wife says, uh, where's the kids? I said, are they working their way home? What do you mean they're working their way home? Yeah, I left, them, I left them about four miles away. They'll figure it out. And the instinct for a mom or a dad is, oh, I got to go protect them. But I was reading an article uh, just the other day. You'll love this. During Teddy Roosevelt's uh, presidency, there's a story, you can Google it, of two young boys. I think they were eight and ten years old. And their dad was friends with Teddy Roosevelt, and he was going from Oklahoma to Washington to New York to go see Teddy, go see the president. And he told his two boys, saddle up. If you want to come, I'll meet you on the East Coast. And these two young boys rode their horses, and it became like a big national thing. It was on the news. Every time the kids went through a town on their horse, it was written up in newspapers, and the whole country followed these two young boys all the way uh, from Oklahoma to Washington and up to New York. So, and I've heard a hundred stories like that. Richard Branson, I became friendly with, right? And, and he's telling me his mother used to drop him off a hundred miles from the house. FFIO, if I can figure it out, right? And and so I think um, if you're, if outside there was a, a baby bear right now, a little cub, and you brought the cub inside and you fed it, and you took care of it for a week, you can't put it back out in the wild. Actually, you just destroyed that cup. If that cup can't handle the outdoors anymore, and so if we're expecting our cubs to go out in the wild, you can't have them grow up in a greenhouse. Can't have them grow up in a zoo. We got to get them prepared for the wild. And and you know, a four mile walk uh, to the house, not that big a deal. Try okay. try riding try riding back from Oklahoma to Washington. 
I, I love my wife's going to throw my wife's going to throw a frying pan at me. So if you see a frying pan, hit me in the head. Tell them yeah. where, there was a sidewalk. Love there it. was sidewalk. <laughs> love it, love it. And how, how long you were married? We're married uh, about fifteen years, something like that. <laughs> wow. Congrats. She we must be a didn't... saint. She must be a saint. <laughs> oh my gosh, she, she's on. Um, well, I really am. I, my halo is so big. Well, she's deaf. And, she's her. deaf and blind, so <laughs> it's easier. <laughs> no. my, my wife and I we just celebrated 20 year and a 20 year anniversary. We have a podcast, God, Money, and Sex, and she would tell you right. like like the first 15 years were like rough. The last five years is when I started to become more conscious. I started to become more, more understanding. So I know what I know what it feels like, brother. 15 years. Uh, your wife must be special to be dealing with a guy like you, because I know my wife is. Wait, this next September, we just did 16. Oh, we just did 16. We're on our way to 17. Yeah. I'm catching you. Awesome. Congratulations, brother. Congratulations. So that's, you know, that's that's what I love to see is is when you start realizing as as a king, because I see you as as you you are you're you're building your kingdom. You're a king. But a lot of us we forget that the queen is what holds down the kingdom. Like I know, yeah. like I, I automatically your energy shifted when she came into the room. Now like you put a smile in your face, your energy shifted. And that's that's the drive. Like as long as our queen is in the same alignment and, and, and we're we're in the same page. Look at that. Hello. I like you. Who's this guy? I like him. He's great. <laughs> Keep talking to him. Hey, um, hey, the only reason there was a smile on my face when she came in the room was that was like a nervous smile. I was afraid I was gonna <laughs> get hit or you were afraid no. of the pan. You were afraid of the pan. <laughs> You you gotta hang out with my wife. My wife will 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 show you how to how to take that energy to be able not to get hit with the pan. <laughs> so let me. I wrote a couple of things down because I wanna I wanna recap this. I wrote a couple of things down here. Here's what I'm hearing from you at the beginning, modeling. Like if you wanna succeed, you have to fucking model. And at the beginning, yeah. you're gonna probably like and and be careful who you model because right now you were you were you and I were modeling gangsters because when I was young I joined a gang too so I know exactly what you went through like we modeled those people that we we want to be like because at the end we're trying to figure our way out we're trying to figure out who we are in in the marketplace but then what what helped you was finding a mentor finding somebody who was doing something bigger than you finding a mentor is the key and that's when I when I found a mentor in real estate it just changed my game because that mentor really showed me how to make money in real estate and then finding your purpose the moment that you you start you started to listen to that purpose, you were not like putting your purpose aside. You were actually open to purpose. You, you were listening to what people were saying. You were open to to a new version of yourself, and you started to evolve. And then life is gonna fucking be hard. And when life is hard, and you're in the middle of the tunnel, do fucking burpees. Burpees. <laughs> do fucking That's burpees. It. When life is hard. Do burpees. I love burpees that. Burpees fix I, I, I want to do a T-shirt of that. When life is hard, do burpees. And when, and when you have a deeper desire, when you have a, a, a drive and you have a burning desire, you, life will help you figure shit out because that's what you're doing. You, fi you figure shit out. Just like with your kids, you know, drop them off four miles, figure shit out. Like if, you, if your drive is to get home and you want that bad enough, you will figure shit out. Figure it out. Like I, I tell my kids all the time, like in these walls, in these walls, you're like the best kid. We love you. We are nothing but, but the best things for you. Outside of these walls, nobody gives a shit about you unless you bring in value. So you be ready okay. to bring value to the marketplace. Be ready to, to make sure that you, you're giving more than you're taking from this world. So now what's the next step? I mean, you have you, Spartan races in 40 countries. I don't know. How many races have you had? How many? Like, do you, do you keep count of how many races overall? 275 uh, races per year, 45 countries, uh, 1.3 million participants annually. Um, we've written a few books, uh, Spartan Up, Spartan Fit, um, The Spartan Way. And, and the goal really is just to get people thinking the way you just described is, you know, how do you find your purpose? How do you stay really focused and don't waste time? How do you get gritty? Um, we're completely aligned. On our messages um i just started i i actually tried to hold off on social media the last 10 years i didn't want to be i just didn't want to do social media my thing was going to be like chopping wood and carrying stones i just didn't want to do it and uh i folded and i started an instagram and, and i'm doing it now so that's also awesome. listen if it wasn't for social media joe i wouldn't be here because i was in real estate and, and my just like you and i networking right networking taking people to dinners you know the, the bankers are making deals that's how we we're old school but now the new game we want to be be relevant we got to bring that game into social media because there's a lot of players out there brother that that are 
teaching the young entrepreneurs that that instant gratification is the game. Like become a millionaire, yeah. but, but in two years, become a millionaire in one year. And that's not the fucking way. We, I mean, you and I know, it, like if you build it in a short way, it's, it's not sustainable. You got to fucking pay the price. Awesome. Off the cards. Yeah, no, we, we, we say we have a 20 year overnight success. <laughs> Love it. Right? Love it, Robert. Yeah. Love it. Love it. So yeah, we definitely follow. I'm going to put everything on, uh, on, the, on, on the video here. Follow Joe. Joe, I started following you, man. It was an inspiration. I started, I started uh, buying a kettlebell. <laughs> I, nice, started, nice. I started carrying up a kettlebell. So I'm gonna for Christmas, my kids are gonna have kettlebells under the tree now. So that, <laughs> let me show you, let me show you something. Hang on. Last night I got in at like eleven o'clock at night, and uh, usually when I fly, uh, I would say one out of three times my kettlebell gets lost on the airline. Got in eleven o'clock last night, and I said, "Here we go." They lost another kettlebell. Hang on here. Can you see those babies? We got, wow. <laughs> here's a tag, here's a tag from last night. So yeah. you, so hold on, you're bringing the kettlebells with you when you travel? I have to, because that's my whole thing is, that's is awesome. carrying this thing everywhere. Right. And so, uh, I thought when I got the global entry, um, and I, and I have some pull with, with a lot of these uniform services that, uh, they would let me bring them on the plane, but about 30% of the time I bring it on the plane, 70% of the time I got to check it. When I check it, uh, either somebody is building a gym next to the airport somewhere because I lose literally a third of these and I got to buy a new one because if I show up to a meeting without my kettlebell, they think I'm a fraud, right? <laughs> right. And then a new stick. Kettlebell doesn't get off the conveyor belt. I got to run to a friggin' store and buy a kettlebell. Love it. That's fucking commitment. That's fucking commitment. commitment. Yeah. It's awesome, brother. Yeah. I'm, my kids are getting kettlebells and I, I bought a kettlebell to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm staying, uh, Spartan, the Spartan fit to make sure that we do the race. Also, brother, so let, let, me you, let me show you the garage. Hang on. Take a look at the garage here. So can you see this thing I built? This little uh, contraption? And for, for, those, for those of you guys who are listening to this, I'm looking at the garage and I see zero Lamborghinis. And I say zero. No <laughs> this what is not a, take a look at my garage, my Lamborghinis. I'm looking at all the, the workout gear that, that he has. And, uh, and it's fucking impressive. Impressive because look at that. Look at this. Look at, that look at this. These guys sent me. These guys sent me this pegboard. Can you see it? Yeah. Look at that. The kids have to use the pegboard. We got the pull-up bar. My buddy sent me this awesome continuous rope. Sometimes I get on this rope while I'm doing a conference call or a podcast. I can knock out three thousand feet. We got wrestling mats. We got box jumps. We got the rope swings, weight vests. This is the. Those are the Lamborghinis. And that's the, and I'm gonna tell you right now, those are better than fucking Lamborghinis because you're building the machine, you're bu building your body, you're taking care of yourself. So if anything happens in the economy, when anything happens in, in your world, you have the fucking weapon to become unstoppable. Right. That's right. And I could duck, I could duck from a flying frying pan. <laughs> hey, listen, let's talk about, and I don't want to sound like a late night commercial, let's talk about the tea. So check this out. I'm in Sparta, Greece last year and I'm, I'm uh, because we have a race coming up in Sparta and I see them. I see these um, farmers up in the mountains. Can you see that? Yep. See I it. see them picking, picking this plant from like, you know, 2000 feet up. And I'm like, what is, I don't understand. What, oh, that's Spartan tea. You don't know about Sparta? I said, no. They said, oh, this has been around 2,500 years. Hippocrates and Socrates used to boil this and drink the tea and then the warriors, the warriors, right, mm -hmm. would rub it all over their cuts and bruises and black and blues. So I said, um, I want it all. I want 3,000 pounds <laughs> of Spartan tea. I want to support the local economy. We're going to bag this stuff and I'm going to give it to our community. So anyway, I'm, I'm going to send you it's, some. You got to drink this when you're doing your podcast. This stuff is unbelievable. Is, can, can people uh, get it now? Is it is it out now? Is it out it's now? Out. You get it. Yeah, but I'll, I'll send it to you. I'm not, awesome. I, again, this is not a commercial. I, I just want, um, I can't even believe, again, I ran into, like, this is on the mountains in Sparta, and Hippocrates and Socrates and the Warriors used to drink this. That's like, awesome, are you kidding man. me? That's, I mean, you can't make this shit up. You can't make this can't shit make up. up. You can't make it up. All make right, brother. So, so, so tell me, what, what's the next race? What's the next race for, for uh, in your community? Sparta. 
Sparta is the big one in, in Greece on October 31st weekend. Um, people have to do um, a sprint, which is three miles, a super, which is eight miles, and a beast, 13 miles, all three in that weekend in Sparta. And I'm working on, I'm working on getting the mayor of Sparta to help me chisel. I'm going to chisel the hundreds of thousands of names of everybody that finishes a trifecta into the stone by the historic site so that you could bring your grandkids, right? And say, I did the Spartan wow. race back in 2020. So, so anyway, that one's coming up. That's awesome. And that's 2020? That is um, next week, October 31st Which weekend. Next week. All right, so after that, so, so are you doing it every year? Is that an every year thing or? or... That's an every year, that's a championship. Um, but li literally every weekend, there might be seven races around the world, South Africa, Brazil, Italy, you name it. So everywhere, there's something going on. Everywhere, the sun never sets on Sparta. That's awesome, brother. That's awesome, man. Listen, your story is an inspiration. I love, I love your energy. I love what you stand for. I love the fact that you know you have a 20 year overnight success. Uh, and for mm. every single entrepreneur that's listening out there, like a man who has the edge, it doesn't matter what happens. If you have the edge, you're gonna figure shit out. If you have the edge, it doesn't matter what happens in your life. Life is always giving you exactly what you need to level the fuck up. And if one thing you have to understand is that life is going to punch you in the face, you can either do burpees or you can fucking cry in your chair. <laughs> you need to level up. Punch in the face, drink the tea, do burpees. You're going to get up. You'll break the chair. You eat the chair. That's it. Do burpees, drink the tea, do some yoga, and you fucking get up yeah. and eat the fucking chair. <laughs> <laughs> love it brother i appreciate you man appreciate you i can't wait to i can't wait to have you i want to i want to send you an invite to be part of our, our events i want to have you a, as a speaker in the next level leadership so, so hopefully we can make I that love, happen also brother anytime i appreciate you thank you learn Thanks it live me. it experience it love life <laughs>